Welcome to the British Virgin Islands. Today we're in one of my favorite hangouts of all time in the British Virgin Islands. That's the Trellis Bay on Beef Island, right near the airport, which is right behind us here. Today we're here with a new Mariner we just finished building that we're going to be testing. And this is one everybody's been waiting for to see if we could actually make it work. And we've got it is the wireless FPV. So as you can see, we've got the camera on there in its stock waterproof housing. But we've also introduced a waterproof wire harness that comes from the camera through the base and into the inside of the Mariner to where the video transmitter is now situated. So we've custom built this one for some testing that we're going to do today and it's had quite a few modifications actually. So as you can see the first thing I've done is move the NASA module, the compass and GPS module to the outside to get it away from electrical magnetic interference inside the, the Mariner itself. Because inside of course you've got plastic shielding, you know you've got two to three layers of plastic in all the different areas and that's going to prevent it from picking up the perfect GPS signal to get as strong a lock as possible. And the further down it is, closer to the battery connections and wiring, everything like that, the more magnetic interference it's going to pick up. So keeping it out here is always the best solution. And I found it to not be a waterproof issue. I've gotten these things wet many times and never had an issue with it whatsoever. So I've put a small hole in here, about 3 sixteenths of an inch, and physically cut the wire for the GPS antenna to run it through the hole. Then siliconed around, and then just taken the wire inside and reattached it. And you can see it's not a shielded cable that's going to have any problems, it's just a data cable with four color-coded wires inside, so basically just matched up the color-coding wires, soldered them together, heat shrunk it all back together, and everything is fine. I've tested that part of it already and know that that's no problem. Other than that, we've also moved the video transmitter inside, as you can see, and I've glued it right in with just two little strips of uh, two-way tape between all the little holes in the vented cover. So that way, the vented cover still performs perfectly. There's no problem there with getting air through for the barometric sensor. And it also allows heat to dissipate straight through the holes from the video transmitter. It's good to try and help that dissipate as best as possible. So we can set this over here. Then you look in, you'll see that I've got two, there's dual 2500 milliamp batteries in here now. Each one is on its own harness. So the main board I've soldered two harnesses, so there's not just one, there's two. And that's another consideration for heat as well because the first tests I did where I increased the battery capacity with just a single battery, I noticed that the weight was affecting the Mariner because the motors were having to spin up quite a bit more and that was drawing quite a bit more power. And of course when you do that through one harness, that harness is going to heat up. You've got extra current going through that harness and it's going to take quite a bit more to fly the Mariner as far as RPM and that means that power has to come faster out of the batteries. So to alleviate the heat buildup, because the heat buildup has become a concern because the NASA electronics, they have a thermal shutoff at 50 degrees Celsius and it does not take long to reach 50 degrees Celsius when you've got all this stuff running inside there and it's a sealed environment completely. We've also done away with the 3S battery that provided power for the video transmitter, everything on the bottom of the Mariner, and we've installed a voltage regulator inside off the main power board. And that voltage regulator now powers the video transmitter, and it will also in the future power the gimbal. Another thing we did that's nice to have is just installed a little LED light in the back. So we've taken the main system LED and put a hole in the back of the Mariner. From one of my marine supply stores, we bought an LED lens and just cut the lens off and physically glued it to the back with silicone so it's completely sealed and waterproof and then the stock system LED is just situated in behind with some adhesive tape. And the only other thing we've done here is I've added a GoPro to the transmitter module because I wanted to be able to show what the FPV screen was seeing and in this way you'll be able to see what I see. I'll be able to superimpose it on the screen as you'll see. Okay so with that said I think it's time to put it together. We'll put it in the water Actually, we're going to take off from the bow and then we're going to drop it in the water near the side of the boat. And we'll have a look and see how everything works and make sure it all holds up. And then if everything is good, we'll take it for a little test run around the bay. Okay, so we've already got everything set up. We've already done the compass calibration. The GPS is locked in. As you can see on my FPV display here, we've got eight, nine satellites already locked in.
So everything is good. Now we've been obviously in salt water, so the main thing we need to do is give it a rinse. You just need to always rinse this off if you're using it in salt water. Fresh water, you're okay, but we always give it a fresh water rinse out of salt. Mainly for the engines. So give everything a quick run. And then just give your engines a little spin, shine a little water in there. Spin, water. And that just makes sure that no salt crystals accumulate inside the motors after it dries. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and lots more coming. So be sure and stay tuned. If you're not subscribed already, then subscribe and we'll have new videos out real soon for you. Take care. Till next time.